Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing our Ace Attorney journey with what I presume to be the final case of Ace Attorney Justice for All. Last time, we went and discovered the truth of what happened to the ringmaster of the Big Berry Circus. And... Just for funds, because I thought there would be a super action-packed opening, maybe. Like, just imagine, like, not imagine, but like, consider. The original final case for, like, the first Ace Attorney game opens with Miles Edgeworth seemingly shooting a guy. This one opens up with, like, ninjas and Power Rangers having a popularity contest. Of course, it does also bring back Mr. Powers from the Silver Samurai turnabout diddly not Silver and Steel. It, it, it's alliterative. Silver and Steel Samurai. So Brain wants to say it. But, so it's neat that he's coming back for the finale to this case, this game. And presumably Miles Edgeworth is also going to come back. I still don't under understand why everyone's like, oh my god, he's dead. How dare you talk about it, Maya? How dare you talk about a dead guy you didn't know was dead? Ah! Uh, that was just a little weird on Phoenix's part. But the end of the last case shows that he is alive and coming home, so that'll be interesting. And right now, Phoenix, Maya, Pearl, and Mr. Powers are at a big banquet hall. And I can only presume that something odd is going to happen. So let us go to Farewell My Turnabout. First things first. I forgot it just opens with the music of the silver, not silver, it's steel samurai. Bleh. What can I say? This is a really high class hotel. I've never eaten this kind of salad before. Poor Pearls, having eaten only vegetables all her life, she's been missing out. Don't worry, any leftovers belong in my happily awaiting stomach anyway. You're such a glutton, Maya. I lose this one to Maya. You sure can eat. I need to remember how I do did Powers' voice. Well, a growing girl needs her nutrients. A growing girl? Exactly how big do you plan on getting? I still love the Steel Samurai thing. The award ceremony was just held on that stage. It was really fabulous. You just reminded me of the circus for a second. Well, shows like that are guaranteed to be good, you know. This is all a dream I don't ever want to wake up. And all the directors and stars that were here to see the heroes. Wow. I had no idea who most of them were. Neither did I. Nick, you've got to, uh, you've got to cut that news-only habit out. Your new show is going to be The Nickel Samurai every Sunday morning at 8. Oh, I know. We can watch it together starting next week. I'll come wake you up extra early to make sure, okay? Ah, I'm fine. You know, you really don't have to, <laughs> have to on my account. Oh, oh man. That was odd. It was like immediately already like, hey, have a new thing to say. There sure is one luxurious hotel. Almost to the point of gaudy with how it blends together everything fancy imaginable. Speaking of fancy, didn't that bellboy give me something like that last year? <laughs> I'm almost surprised, because isn't this the same hotel? So I'm surprised that he isn't here. There's a grand set of doors over there. And behind those doors is an equally grand lobby. Shall we go and take a look, Mr. Nick? Hey, wait up! This is grand dessert is calling to me. It's saying, eat me now! Well, I guess let's go to the hallway and see a murder. Well, somebody's getting all the love. Wow, what is it with this place? Looks like I've stumbled into Oz or something. Way in the back, there's a sign for the bathroom. Maybe I should visit it while I can before the show starts. There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says, Juan Corita's room. Juan Corri... Juan Corridor? What? One corridor? What do you mean? <laughs> that one feels so, so like, ridiculous that I'm expecting it to be fake in-universe. 
His name just sounds like a star's name. I've heard it before, but I don't know anything about him at all. Compared to the flowers on the other side of the hall, these are much more gorgeous. Let's see, record companies, fan clubs, company workers, family... Carrying all these flowers home would be hard, I think. To Mr. On Guard from the Global Studio staff. Ah, it'd be nice if lawyers got flowers too. Something like, to Mr. Wright from all your grateful clients. There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says, Matt On Guard. I don't think Matt is part of the pun, it's just on guard, which is quite simple. I've heard that name before. Oh yeah, Maya's always yammering about him like the obsessed fan she is. There are toilets in each room in this hotel, but since all sorts of events are held here, there are bathrooms for people who aren't staying here to use as well. It's perfect for people like me who can't afford to stay here in the first place. Well, I guess I'll... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so I wasn't even supposed to go there. Let's talk about Will. Let's talk about Will. Thank you very much for inviting us today. Oh, it's nothing, really. Guys like us don't get to come to a place like this often, so I thought I'd invite you all. Hey, Mr. Powers, what have you been up to lately? Well, since the Pink Princess successfully wrapped up last month, I've been on a kid's exercise show while wearing a rabbit mask over my face. Oh, I see. I'm still really sorry about all the headaches I caused you that time, Mr. Wright. Ah, uh, well, that's what's done is done, so let's forget about it. This is Will Powers. He's an action star. His popularity exploded when he was the Steel Samurai. He was the first chase Maya... First chase. First case Maya worked on with me. It's too bad you look scary or people know you're... <laughs> people know you're a real soppy who's good with kids. Um, thanks. The Nickel Samurai. I can't believe they're going to make a movie based on the Nickel Samurai. I can't believe it either, but for a different reason. The Steel Samurai, an epic story of one hero in a desperate fight against his arch nemesis, the evil magistrate in the city of Neo Old Tokyo. And last year, they started a new series, the Nickel Samurai. The new series seems to be a hit with kids too. I wonder what the plot is. I'm really attached to the Steel Samurai as a show, so I was hoping that maybe I'd get a chance to do something in this new one. Yeah, it's too bad. It'd be awesome to see you with the new, the new actor, Matt On Guard. He's super popular right now. Mr. On Guard? Looks like Pearls doesn't know who he is. This year it's going to be the Nickel Samurai versus the Jam and Ninja at the box office. Jam and Ninja? Who is that again? <laughs> we have to ask about it. So who is this jammin' ninja again? He's a hero, duh. His symbol is the bright red guitar he's always carrying, which notably he wasn't at the ceremony, apparently. A ninja who's always carrying around a bright red guitar? How does that even work? Because it's the ancient magical electric ninja guitar. <laughs> well, that's, that's adorable looking. I, he looks like... I, he looks like a certain, like a Mega Man villain character, just humanized with a guitar. With a scarf around his neck and a guitar in hand, he rises to start. Oh, that's Maya talking, not to Phoenix, you fool, you meringue. With a scarf around his neck and a guitar in hand, he rises to stardom in an ancient time. A ninja who becomes a star? Yeah, a ninja who becomes a star! There's a strong rivalry between the two of them. Global Studios Nickel Samurai and Worldwide Studios Gem and Ninja. They even air at the same time. You know what I heard? I heard those two don't get along at all. The Nickel Samurai's on guard and the guy who, uh, who plays the Gem and Ninja, I mean. The Nickel Samurai speaks French? Oh, you mean Matt on guard, the actor. <laughs> what? Phoenix, are you going insane? I guess even the world of heroes isn't a sparkling happy place. Yeah. Sounds like the most, like the post-ceremony show is about to start. All right, I'm so pumped. I wonder if he's going to show off his special move today, Nickel Samurai Smelting. Actually, what I'm interested in is most of the press conference. You mean the big confession the Nickel Samurai is going to make after the show? So what is it? Don't you know what it's about, Mr. Powers? Uh, well, I'm not the Steel Samurai anymore, so I don't have any idea. Bah. <laughs> so sorry. 
Uh, so I guess you're all going to the press conference then. Yeah, of course. If that's the case, then here, take these tickets so you can get in. Press conference ticket number 16. Seems like the Nickel Samurai is to confess something after the post-ceremony stage show. Thank you very much. Well, let's get going to the lobby. It looks like it's over this way, Mr. Nick. Okay, for great justice! I just like that, just talking to people. Let's see if anything's popped up in the hallway. Nothing's popped up in the hallway. Kind of interesting they actually let you go there. Well, to the hotel lobby. Gatewater Hotel Lobby. Hmm, only a real gaudy hotel would have such a large gaudy lobby to match. I think they're going to have the post-ceremony show over there. They're using a compact stage, I see. Ooh, I'm all ready to use my special samurai power. Well, it looks like she's ready to start a fight. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. The Nickel Samurai's post-ceremony stage show will not be held tonight due to unforeseen circumstances. What? Why? Ow! You didn't have to pinch me! Pinch yourself if you don't believe it! We are asking for everyone's cooperation at this time. So please, stay where you are. This is a special request from the police. Well, <laughs> Police? Did they just say police? D do you want me to go check out what's going on? Um, wait. I'll come with you. Freeze! You two, did you hear the announcement just now? It's just finished telling you not to move! That voice. I've heard that voice somewhere before. Well, I haven't. Honestly, you fees... I've seen that costume before. I know who's in that costume. Honestly, you these days can't be bothered to listen to other people when they talk. Just the other day, it was a fine thing. There was no... And then it said, beware, bridge out. And along comes a nose punk to the bridge. I tried to tell the boy the bridge is out, but it's dangerous. Listen, no, of course not. He said if the bridge is out, part was dangerous. I'm not kidding you here. The kid really meant it. Well, I really let him have it then. Off that bridge. Honestly, kids these days don't know right from wrong, I tell you. This non-stop chatter. It can't be. Miss Old Bag? What is it? You young whippersnappers. Do I know you? Wait, you! Your powers, aren't you? Yeah, I'm about what happened back then. You didn't even get nominated this year, did you? Oh, that's right. You're doing that children's exercise program trying to play nice. Uh, yeah, that's me. Thankfully, I still have a job. I love that show, and you're a hoot! You're the big brother character, right? Yes, even with your face comes by mask, I know you're that giant rabbit. What a work of art, that's it, how you know. I mean, if you didn't wear that mask, who knows how many TVs you break? Really, the show with these kids exercising you. They're getting... Ah, she just keeps on going. Um, what are you doing here? Look at my uniform and tell me what you can't... And tell me you can't tell I'm a member of security. But that outfit... Annoying, noisy brats, get the blaster! Well, she's really into it. <laughs> no mean brats get the blaster. Well, she enjoys her job. Miss Oldbag, what are you doing here? What happened to your position at Global Studios? Oh, that old place. Well, since that incident, they've been letting people go. When they cut the security team, I got the pink slip. What incident? What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? I didn't do anything, you young'un! Don't you remember the incident a year ago? When this lady got on the witness stand and testified? Yeah. And you? Weren't you the one who was bullying me? This fragile girl at heart! Um, I plead the fifth. But you know, I think I maybe rubbed the upper management the wrong way by testifying. Yes, that has to be it. Everything is all your fault! Me? I thought about being a bodyguard at first, after being handed old Pinky. You? A bodyguard? Oh, your friend, that fiery, good-looking guy with the red jacket in the ruffles. Mr. Edgeworth? But... That sort of arrangement would be entirely too troublesome for me. That's what he said to me. What did I ever do to deserve that? <laughs> That's an amazing pose. <laughs> I don't know why they... I guess it makes sense for Windbag to be here because Powers is here and this has to do with samurai stuff. I love that, like, the filler 
case from last game is returning as an important case this time. Although, that would be kind of hilarious if a game ended on a filler case. <laughs> um, so, did something happen? I don't have all the details. But it looks like another one of those incidents happened again. A an incident? Like a murder kind of incident. Maybe. You see, I'm a bit of a devilish woman. So wherever I go, showers of blood are sure to follow. But you didn't know that. Um, then shouldn't you quit being a security guard at least for other people's sake? Silence, Snapper! Snapper! <laughs> I love that pose. It's like she's so into it that she's just like, I'm going to pretend to blast you. Hey, Nick. What is it? I don't like that devilish smile playing on your lips. Let's make like we're going to the bathroom and check things out. No, no way. The police told us not to go anywhere, remember? Huh? How boring. You're such a boring guy. You've got no motivation, no spirit. Huh? What? What's going on? Are you giving Mystic Maya trouble again, Mr. Nick? Not you too, Pearls. Please don't stick your little nose into this one. So listen to this, Pearly. This one time at lawyer camp. <laughs> Nick? Okay, I get it. Let's go take a look. There was a, a lawyer camp? He actually has a story from lawyer camp? I knew you couldn't say no to me, Nick. That's right. You'd walk over miles of hot coals for Mystic Maya, wouldn't you, Mr. Nick? That would be every time we work a case together. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go already. You can come along too, Pearly. Goody, I get to come, I get to come. This is such an odd case so far. Windbag out of nowhere, pretending to blast people with a blaster. There's nothing really out of the ordinary here. Are you looking for the incident that the old lady was talking about? Doesn't look like it happened here. Well, we'd better go look elsewhere. All right, then let's try... Excuse me. Ah! The... All right, different bellboy. Why is your face carved down the middle? Did you get a face transplant? Are you by chance, Miss Maya Fay? Um, yeah, that's me. You have a phone call waiting for you at the front desk. A call? I wonder if it's someone from Terrain Village. What's wrong, Mystic Maya? Oh, nothing. You guys go on ahead and I'll be right there, okay? Okay. Right this way, Miss Faye. Let's go look somewhere else now, Mr. Nick. Yeah, okay. This is a little exciting and a little scary. I, I don't know why somebody was calling this hotel for Maya. That implies that somebody knew that she'd be here. Gatewater Hotel Hallway. I told you! I give people the info they want, which means that I've got a right to know! Nope, don't care who you are, pal. We're still investigating, so you can't go in. What's your problem? Just your wait. I'll be all over the morning paper. Scruffy detective secret scandal revealed. You'll see. I'll get you back. I want... Could that possibly be Lata and, of course, the Scruffy detective could only be one person? Those two sound pretty serious. That southern accent can only mean... Hey, right? Hey, Lata. Come on, do a gal favor and tell this cop I'm just doing my job and I've got rights. Ah, uh, you! Ah, uh, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal, help a guy out. Tell her that only the police are all out here. This is a wacky, this is a wacky reunion. I swear, I almost expect, like, Von Karma old man to come in here and tell me, it's like, Ah, oh, Phoenix, do an old pal and old friend and get me out of jail. <laughs> This is the scene of a murder, so she should leave this to us pros. Uh, a murder? Ah, shoot, me and me bug mouth. Say, I knew it. My gut instinct told me so. I always trust my gut. A murder, it said, and that's what it is. A genuine murder. <laughs> hey, wait. Yeehaw, a murder of a big star, no less. Oh, man, I'm in trouble now. All right, things are going crazy. So, Detective Gumshoe, a murder? Uh, no, that's not it. I've got my facts mixed up for a second there, pal. So a suicide? Um, Mr. Nick? 
Is the dead person the Nickel Samurai? Huh? Why do you ask? Well, Mystic Maya was rooting for him, so? What do you mean? Do you expect everyone Maya to root for to die, Pearls? It wasn't the Nickel Samurai that got bumped. Actually, the Nickel Samurai is the one under suspicion of doing the bumping up, but you just said it wasn't a murder. What? The guy that died was the hero that, uh, was this hero named the Jamma Ninja, pal. The Jamma Ninja. Um, that woman with the big puffy hair that looks like cotton candy. You mean Lada? That woman, she was there that time too, right? That time? When Mystic Maya did that channeling. Oh, that time. Well, Lada's a journalist, so that's why she's here. Journalist. It looks like she was hanging around here before the murder happened. Hanging around? Yeah, hiding and wait in front of the Gemma Ninja's door, pal. But why would she... She wouldn't tell me, pal. She just said something about getting my big scoop. Scoop? What sort of news could she be after? So the victim was the Gemma Ninja. Mr. Gemma Ninja? He was on a really popular rival TV show to the Nickel Samurai. Oh! The victim was the action star, Juan Corrida. He got a huge push and rode the express train to stardom. I mean, even I know who he is. Yeah, even I recognize his face. But I heard lately that Matt on God's been taking the wind out of his sail. I'm telling you, pal, as far as who's popular, those two are hugging all the limelight. I guess there's no space for Mr. Powers at all, huh? Poor guy. Mr. On Guard, um, that's the Nickel Samurai, right? Yep. I mean, no! You've got to say it with more triumph. The Nickel Samurai! Anyway, so now that Juan Corrida's gone, that means Mr. On Guard has the whole stage to himself, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't bet on it, pal. I wouldn't bet on it, pal. We can't have that happen, you know. Can't have that happen. What about that? What about that? Wow. I wonder why I put the wonder at the beginning. What's that supposed to mean, I wonder? I wonder. Do you have anything to say? Would you take a look at this for me? Listen, pal, I'm not leaking any info about the evidence deal this time. If I do, my salary's really gonna get it. And then I won't even be able to get those instant noodles down at the discount market! Poor guy. Well, I guess that's it. Let us, uh, move back to the Voila Hall, I guess. And then the hotel lobby, I guess. Or not. Well, I, we didn't examine this area anyway. It's a stage for the post-ceremony stage show. There was supposed to be a press meeting after the show, but no. It looks like no one will hear what the Nickel Samurai had to confess after all. Cameras must belong to the press that came to cover the conference. They're all basically doing the same thing, staring at the empty stage. A lobby with a grand staircase always feels enormous. But right now, the only thing filling this enormous room is anxiety about the murder. I really hope nothing else bad happens here. Congratulations, you have cursed the entire world, you idiot. Seats for the spectators of the post-ceremony show and the press conference. It's too bad neither of the neither event is going to be held now. Hmm. I'm supposed to be here. These eyes of mine are real pros now. Pros? Pros are doing what? I'm doing police work, of course. My eyes are like a hawk, and my professional eyes were a messy incident, a messy bloody incident. That's why I don't have time for you meddling kids and your pretty petty little things. Hmm, I guess we need to investigate the hallway. Even though I already did by accident. <laughs> or do we? Let's see. Oh, maybe I need to investigate that teddy bear. I can understand flowers in front of the dressing rooms. But what are stuffed bears doing here? Could it be that there isn't an action star with a soft spot for teddy bears? Nah, it can't be. And we'll probably never know because now the guy's dead. Hmm. I'm a turdy! <laughs> nah. Hmm. He wore 
award ceremony was just held on that stage. It was really fabulous. You just reminded me of the circus for a second. I wonder if everyone's all right. I heard that very big circus just recently, well, recently started holding performances again. I'm sure they're all fine, girls. Hmm. What am I supposed to do? There's a grand set of doors over there. It's the doors um, Bellboy went out of. So, that's called a chandelier, right? Yep. What is that for? What does it do? Well, it's for lighting up a room, Pearls. Um, Mr. Nick, can I look down now? My neck hurts. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> I'm already lost and it's only the beginning! I am the fool! I still love that pose. <laughs> hmm. Oh! I forgot! I can do this! I can do this! I can do a thing! I messed up. I'm a fool. I completely forgot that we could actually present profiles. At least that's a that, that's kind of good that they make that a thing that you have to do so that you're not like constantly forgetting. I'm not a real fan of action shows or anything, but I know who won Korida and Madangara. You can't talk about one without talking about the other, I guess. They even debuted around the same time, so they have this fierce rivalry with each other, kind of like you and me, pal. I never knew he thought of me as a rival. The Nickel Samurai. He really took the Grand Prix tonight. Maya's a big fan of his. Really? Well, I'm sorry, then. Why are you sorry? Mad on God was just arrested, pal. On suspicion of murdering Juan Corridor. What? Interesting that... Okay, I was going to say, well, why do I have to present that even though he already said that the actor of the Nickel Samurai was arrested, or like was suspicious of murder and that could have been used but I do like that that was used as a reminder that the character profile thing is can be presented I like that it's a nice thing to be like hey player player remember this is a thing why was Matt on Mr. on guard arrested sorry pal but that's not something I can tell you we just thought it'd be investigation so we don't want any leaks looks like yet another steel samurai hero is in hot water um Mr. Nick if Mr. Ma Mystic Maya knew about this... Yeah, I know. She'd make me take the case. I know. So let me guess. I move? Hmm. Maybe back to the hotel lobby? Yes! Hey, so what's going on, Mr. Wright? It looks like Juan Corrida has been killed. What? Juan is... he's... Looks like he was murdered. And a suspect was arrested. That suspect is Mr. Matt on guard. You're joking, right? Nope. The arrest of the Nickel Samurai and suspicion of murdering the Jammin Ninja. Oh, uh, not again. I feel sick. Again? About a year ago, something just like this happened, Pearls. I still can't believe. No way. No way, Matt would. What's Mr. Powers got in his hand? It's a walkie-talkie? Oh, before I forget, this... This is for you, Mr. Wright. I got this from the bellboy that came by earlier. Radio transceiver, originally from the bellboy. It can transmit and receive signals over great distances. Is Edgeworth manipulating things? But how would he know that a crime would be committed here? If it is Edgeworth. Hmm. For me? But why? I don't know. All he said was it was for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney. Matt is the most energetic and active actor out there right now. The Nickel Samurai really sealed his place as a pop idol, but he kept adding fuel to the fire of his rivalry with Juan anyway. But oh, that was a nice, that was a neat, like, new pose for Will Powers. Mr. Juan, he's the Jammin' Ninja, right? Those two would butt heads over everything they could think of. But I'd say that Matt was the one who almost always came out on top. 
I guess some people will only know how to relate to others by butting heads like a ram. While you're doing weird investigative stuff with I, a weird stitched face bellboy doing something, remember to stay hydrated. Juan said that he'd take Matt on this time too, so we joined a rival TV show. And that was the Jammin' Ninja. The stylish nickel samurai in the burning Jammin' Ninja. Well, things turned out messy real fast with those two using their shows for their war. And the final tally. Look around, it's pretty obvious how things ended up. Matt even won the Grand Prix this year. The final win over his rival, I guess. Mr. On Guard was going to hold a press conference, wasn't he? That's what I heard. Well, if you wanted to get technical about it, it was the Nickel Samurai's conference. The Nickel Samurai's? Yeah, he was supposed to wear his costume and give the press conference that way. He was going to be in costume, but why? I'm not sure. They don't keep me in the loop anymore. Um, I was just wondering, where's Mystic Maya? She's been gone a long time. Now that she mentions it, Maya was only going to answer a phone call. Maybe she got lost. I'll take a quick look around for her. You're a child! Oh, hey! The mysterious transceiver. Ah! Wh what is it, Mr. Nick? Uh, I'm not sure. It's coming from this transceiver. Yes? Hello? Right here. Is this... Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney? Uh, you are? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concerning yourself with, such as... Help, Nick! M Mystic Maya! Maya? So, Mr. Wright, wouldn't you agree that the more important issue is the fate of the girl? Her fate? Does he mean what I think he means? Maya, where are you? Are you hurt? Come now, don't fall apart on me yet. This... No, this can't be... Now that I have your attention, Mr. Attorney, I have a modest proposal for you. If you do what I require, then I will return to you your valuable item unharmed. What is this called again in your fancy lawyer terms? Kidnapping for ransom. Yes, that's it. This is a kidnapping. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Well, I did not... Okay, so it wasn't Edgeworth, but I knew there was something hinky-dinky with that scar-faced bellboy. My sight. Everything's fading away. Maya. Maya, Maya's been kidnapped. There? Mr. Attorney, are you there? How much? How much do you want? Very good, Mr. Attorney. I'm glad you have such a good grasp of this situation. Hurry up and stay your condition, and then return Maya! Money is not what I see. What? What I want is a certain verdict. I would like a complete acquittal. Complete acquittal? What in the world have you done to need to... I am not the person you will be representing. What? You are currently at the Gatewater Hotel, are you not? And I know that a murder has just taken place there. One, one Cordo was killed, and the suspect is mad on guard. You are, as expected, quite on top of things, Mr. Attorney. Now then, what I want is very simple. I want you to obtain a complete acquittal for Matt on guard. Matt on guard? But why? He did not kill anyone. I can attest to that. However... However? However what? However... Someone is framing him for the murder. A very smart someone who is setting him up to take the fall. If I agree and do what he wants, can I believe he'll keep us into the bargain? You are, of course, at the liberty to take me at my word or not. However, there is one thing you can take as fact. Right now, your very precious item is with me in my possession. Help! Nick! Maya! You have two days. Of course, tonight you will be in questioning with the police. But the trial is in two days. At 
at that trial, you will win a not guilty verdict. Remember, you only have one chance. One chance, Mr. Attorney. One? You expect me to get a not guilty in one trial day? Yes, exactly. I don't believe I was wrong in choosing you. So don't let me down. Ah! Oh, yes, that's right. Now that I am playing the role of the kidnapper, I can't pass up this chance to say, and don't even think about calling the cops. <laughs> Not great, buddy, you get the idea. Damn it! Who? Who the hell are you? Very well, I'll tell you that much. My name is... The Killer. And the sad thing is, in this world, that could very well be their name. <laughs> Mr. Dick! Where's Mystic Maya? She's been kidnapped. No, it's all my fault! I've only had gone with Mystic Maya! It's not your fault, Pearls. But it is! It is! Mystic Maya! Mr. Wright, I think we... I think we should tell the police what's going on. No, we can't do that. If we do, who knows what will happen to Maya? Mr. Nick, what about the detective we saw earlier? Detective Gumshoe? Yes, that's it. Wait here and I'll be right back. I'm all right. I'll take care of Pearl while you're away. What? Ransom? Shh, not so loud. The ransom is complete acquittal for Matt on guard. Wait, the deal is the complete acquittal in exchange for Maya, you mean? Then this means a man on guard is obviously the killer, pal! No doubt about it! But the guy said that Mr. On Guard is innocent. You really believe what a kidnapper tells you, pal? I guess he has a point. If on Guard really is innocent, then why the kidnapping? The kidnapper just told you that there's a smart someone framing him. And on top of that, everything else, there's... Uh, there's all this evidence we keep finding. Huh? The forensics team's having a field day back there. Um, but it's strange. There's so much evidence, then it feels like something's wrong. There's too much evidence. Is that possible? Actually, didn't the kidnapper say something about on guard being set up? Anyway, looks like you won't be leaving here tonight, pal. Just sit tight and cooperate with the investigation. Tomorrow you can start yours. All right. Isn't there another way? We've also got to be careful about pushing the kidnapper the wrong way. You're right. Well, this is an interesting turn of events. Date, time, location. Uh, on my head. The wine cellar? Where, where am I? I wonder if I'm still in that hotel. What happened to me? Nick? Pearly! Come on, you guys, this isn't funny anymore! Ah, uh, but I want to keep my, like, <laughs> my over-the-top thing. It's like... I see that you have awoken. Ah! Who are you? Me. I am known as the Killer. The sound of the game is too loud. Hmm. All right. Oh, that's right. Thank you. That's what I get for not checking all my stuff. Thank you for the alert. Me. I am known as the Killer. D -d the Killer? You mean like an assassin? I I'm too young to die. Don't worry. You're not my target. For now, anyway. Ah! Nick! Nick! Where are you? Help me. Yes, that's right. Only one person can save you now, and that is Mr. Phoenix Wright. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you say? Why do I get the feel that... Yeah, it's just like... Again, the, your face is so wonky and weird. There has to, Either that's a mask or you are one weird person. Then again, who knows? <laughs> again, the Mr. Phoenix Wright almost makes me think your friend Zika in disguise. Because she's the one that keeps saying the full name and not just Mr. Wright. What? Nick? Nick's going to save me? Calm down and be a good girl. Think of this as a business transaction. A business transaction? I'm going to contact him now. I hope you'll cooperate and play your assigned role well. Nick, what's going to happen to me? Nick, Pearly, sis. 
<laughs> Honestly, that would be kind of hilarious if Maya channeled Mia and kicked that guy's ass. Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concerning yourself with. I wonder if we're just going to go through the entire conversation again. Oh, okay, good. It just cut off there. Shows us Maya's perspective and then cuts off because at the same time, I would have found it hilarious if it just was the entire conversation, but from their point of view. Good morning. Ah, uh, morning, Pearls. Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, come on! Let's hurry and go see Mr. On Guard! We have to wait a bit, Pearls. The visiting hours don't start until 9 a.m., so... Oh, I see. Oh, Mystic Maya. If only, if only I'd gone with you, then there would be two people kidnapped. Because you are a child. Then again, maybe you could have channeled me and both of you could have kicked the killer's ass. That would be funny. My mind just immediately goes to high-powered possession... For violence. Poor Pearls. She's been like this since last night. We managed to get home somehow. Yesterday evening. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe gently holding her by the hand and leading her here. But by the looks of it, I don't think Pearls got any sleep at all last night. Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya, she's alright, right? Yeah, she's alright. Either way, I'm going to save her. You can trust me on that. Please. Please help her. I'm only able to stay this calm and collected because Pearls is doing the crying for the both of us. That makes me think of a, a Dragon Ball Z abridged where Trillin goes, Well, if he wasn't freaking out, I would be. Um, I have a thought. Huh? You're going to represent Mr. On Guard, aren't you? Yeah, I don't really seem to have a choice. Um, but what if... What if he is the real murderer? What would you do then, Mr. Nick? Would you fight to get a not guilty verdict for a murderer to save Mystic Maya? Pearls, let's talk to Mr. Unguard first, okay? We can think all the bad things we want, but it doesn't change a thing. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, I, I can't stop thinking about it. Because the, the, the killer did say that the guy was being set up, so I wondered. <laughs> We're getting there super early. I couldn't wait for visiting hours to start, so Pearls and I came down here early to visit one nickel samurai charged with the murder of the Jammin' Ninja. Good morning. How are you today? I know this situation might be a little tough for you. Um, we're... Oh, sorry, dude. I already signed up. Excuse me? I already have life insurance. I signed up a long time ago because my job is, you know. Oh, no, no, no. We're not insurance salespeople. Really? Dude, I really don't need them right now either. Fire extinguishers. I mean, this building isn't my house, so... This guy seems very dumb. You are a very dumb man. I honestly... No, no. We're not here to sell you fire extinguishers either. I'm a lawyer. My name is Phoenix Wright. A lawyer? All right, that's kind of interesting. Hold on a sec. I'm going to ask my manager, okay? They let you have a cell phone in jail? Interesting cell phone, at least. The Nickel Samurai sure is a strange person, isn't he? I think strange is an understatement. Sorry about that. You're just in time. Huh? You're a lawyer dude, right? My manager's looking for a good one right now, so how about it? M Mr. Nick, this is our chance. To make him let me take this case, I have to. This is the first, honestly, this is the first time we've gone into a case where we had to, like, con well, no, there was uh, turnabout goodbyes where we had to convince the diddly dude, Miles Edgeworth. Sorry to intrude, but I would like to ask you a few personal questions. Um, that's okay, but dude, my autobiography's coming out soon, so if I say stuff without the publisher's approval, then I'm gonna be in real hot water. He has to call the publisher. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna guess my publisher, okay? Mr. Ungard is too lucky. He has so many people he can talk to. Um, I don't know if he actually has anyone he can really talk to. Sorry about that. Like I thought, the publisher said it'd be real bad if I said anything, dude. Does he have a mind of his own? Mr. Ungard, I would like to ask you about the murder. 
Oh, are you covering for this tabloid as a side job, dude? Um, uh, well, if you want my statement on this, you should ask through my staff. No, no, no. I'm not asking to, on behalf of a tabloid. This guy just... Hold on a sec. I guess I... Do I have to show him my badge? I'm gonna ask the president of the studio, okay? Is he alright, Mr. Nick? If we're talking about Mr. Ungard's brain here, I wouldn't put my money on it. Sorry about that. The studio president said, Even Neo Mount Fuji itself knows that I'm not the murderer. Um, Mr. Nick, what's Neo Mount Fuji? It's a mountain in the city of Neo Old Tokyo, the city the Nickel Samurai protects. I guess I have to be like, dude. Mr. On Guard, this is an attorney's badge. Dude, I'm sorry, but I don't have the free time to be looking at things like that. Huh? I'm much too busy with Nickel Samurai stuff right now. You are in jail! I don't have time to take a lawyer's correspondence course. Why does he believe I'm a salesman? Insurance and extinguishers, now this? What's that? There's a ticket for the press conference. You were going to give one after winning the Grand Prix, right? Huh? Me? Yes, while you were in costume, no less. Uh, I never heard anything about like that, dude. I only heard about the stage show. I always leave that kind of stuff to my manager. He didn't know? That's odd. Mr. Nick, what are you going to do with that? I don't know yet, but I figured I could at least show it to him. Is that a transceiver? Hey, it looks like a real nice one, too. I got it as a present from someone. Hmm, interesting. I've also been instructed to take your case. Is that what you heard from the transceiver? Yes. Dude, that's terrible. Don't let some disembodied voice boss you. You are literally letting that happen when it comes to your rich watch. That's coming from a man with a cell phone on his wrist. Well, dude, I think it's about time for me to get going. Please wait. I really need to take your case. There's always other people in need of a lawyer, right? Want me to introduce you to a few? Please, please let Mr. Nick represent you. Man, oh man, lawyers these days. Now you dudes use kids to pull in clients too? If you don't take me as your lawyer, then the killer is going to... Wait, what did you just say? The killer. The killer? What's he doing? He looks like he's mulling something over. All right, dude. I accept your terms. Huh? I'll let you represent me in court. We did it! We did it, Mr. Nick! Uh, yeah. I don't feel any better for it, and he doesn't look too happy either. Go ahead, ask me anything. I'll about as much as I can. So, the killer is somebody that he knows as well. Man, I think my lucky stars that people know my name. Well, you're quite the hero, and you're in the national spotlight. I didn't know who he is. Does that mean I'm not a good citizen? <laughs> Ah, it's really great to be the Nickel Samurai. Dude, lately I just keep on getting more and more popular. Sure enough, the Nickel Samurai is very popular among high schoolers and secretaries right now. Why specifically secretaries? <laughs> what? I guess Mr. On Guard has a way of catching the eyes of women. Do you know my motto? Refreshing like a spring breeze. That's what I am. A spring breeze? That's why this kind of scandal is disastrous, dude. I mean, even if I get out of here tomorrow, it's still gonna look bad. And everyone loves a good scandal. Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage show to do. So I was in my Nickel Samurai costume. And you were alone the entire time. My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. Because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show? I told you, dude. I have no idea about any press conference, all right? That's... Excuse me. That's strange. I thought the Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. Anyway, when I was leaving my room, that's when I noticed it was kind of noisy. Mr. Corda was already dead at that time? Yeah, that's what I gathered anyway from my manager. I'm beginning to gather that this guy can't do a thing on his own. And that's when the detective in the green coat showed up. He searched me, and then out of the blue, the dude arrested me. About you and the victim, Mr. Juan Corda. What sort of... That's got nothing to do with anything, dude. Man, with that face of his, he can't even tell he's the same age as me. And he wanted to try and make a Jammin' Ninja movie, even though we all know it'd fail. The Nickel Samurai still won in the end, right? Yeah, I took a Grand Prix by storm. So why would I, the winner, have any reason to kill the guy anyway? Dude, you think it'd be the other way around, you know? That's what I... I actually was thinking that, but didn't voice it. 
probably because I got distracted. He doesn't really have a motive beyond he doesn't like the guy, but really, he already won, so why would he want to kill him? Um, do you know why you were arrested? I guess maybe my full body search went badly. Did they find something on you? They found a button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. A button? I don't get it either. There's a cotton my pleats on the samurai pants on my hakama. Ah! Dude, I really think someone planted it there, though. I'm serious. I wonder if that's what really happened. I guess it's about all I'm gonna get out of him. Mr. Nick? Yeah? Let's ask one last thing. Let's test Mr. On Guard to see if he really is innocent or not. We can do that? Yes. If you use this... Maya's Megatama. He won't be able to hide any secrets from you, Mr. Nick. I'm sure of it. I get it. Mr. On Guard, I'd, last ask you, I'd like to ask you one more question. Please answer honestly. What is it, dude? Did you kill Mr. Juan Corrida? <laughs> Please put the phone away and answer the question yourself. All right, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes one corridor, okay? Would be hilarious if the chains came in. But now we know he's innocent! Well, Mr. Nick? Nothing. Not a chain or lock in sight. Which means it's all right to trust him. Unless he's just that goddamn dumb. That he somehow killed him and he didn't even know. <laughs> Oh god, please don't have another Regina. <laughs> Regina was good in her own case, but no. <laughs> I don't think I could defend a Regina. Yeah, it does appear that way. Well, at least I can breathe a sigh of relief knowing my client is innocent. Um, the trial's tomorrow, right? I'm counting on you, dude. <laughs> well, that was an opening. Went so many directions that I did not expect. I didn't expect Maya to be kidnapped. I... No idea who the killer is. Again, my brain kind of leans towards Franzika. If only because that face looks fake because of the stitch down the middle. And they used the phrase, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Which, she, which is something that was noted that she does specifically. Well, at least we were able to get Mr. Matt on guard as our client, and we know that he didn't do it, which is very important. So? So now what should we do? Well, the trial's tomorrow, and we only get this one chance. There's only one way to prove Mr. On Guard's innocence. We have to find the real killer. Okay, then let's start looking. Off we go to the hotel lobby! Hey, what do you think you're doing? You can't come in without... Good morning. Hold on, it's you! What is going on around here? Uh, um... I heard poor Juan was killed, is that true? It's a bad rerun is what this is. Another steel samurai doing the most evil of deeds. Um, you know, that's not entirely... I'll have you know that I was a huge fan of Juan's. At this rate, I'm surprised that Edgeworth didn't die because everyone you're a fan of dies. Why, oh why do all the stars I'm interested in drop one by one like flies. It's always been that way ever since I was a little girl in school. The first hamster was fine, and then it died. The other kids start calling me Queen Reaper. Whoever in the name of you spelled it with taunt. She just goes so fast, I can't read it all. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you about the murder and what happened. <clears throat> Don't push me, boy. Um, Mr. Nick, I am... Um, I couldn't hear everything she said because she was talking too fast. In this old bag, could you please speak a little slower? Don't boss me around, you smoky heads, money pants! I still love that pose. It's so silly and stupid. Oh, but it's so majestic. My dear Hammer died a year ago in that dreadful murder. And only recently did I finally find a star that makes this heart go for dump again. I don't know what to say. I ask you, why does every star I cheer for always end up kicking the bucket? Um, I'd watch your words, do it's going to get away with saying anything bad about my Juan. But I haven't said anything. Well, I don't believe a word that woman says anyway. Huh? What woman? That irritating backwater girl with the afro and the horrible country accent. I mean, what is that manner of speaking supposed to be? And why does she never stop? 
Honestly, women these days, they don't know the meaning of the word modesty. When I was a young maiden, I was so beautiful and the flowers blushed. But despite that, I pressed flowers and stars and beautiful poems or... Pearls, are you thirsty? Um, a little. Okay, I'll get you some juice or something. Thank you very much. Hey, are you paying attention, youngins today? I'm guessing Miss Oldbag heard everything from Lada. I want to ask you about what happened around the time of the murder. I don't know anything about that. I was here getting ready. Getting ready? For what? The show, of course. Well, and the press conference afterwards. Cue mysterious music for the magical press conference. Anyway, I don't know anything about the murder. Ah, I see. But... But if you're talking about what I saw, that's different. I saw it very clearly. What? I saw the most important moment of the night. Well, what did you see? But the most important moment? You don't mean... Oh, so now you treat me with respect, you disrespectful child. When you speak to your elders, you should always be polite, really, kids these days. Please tell me, what did you see? Oh. Oh, dear lord! The murder last night was gruesome, wasn't it? But then what murder isn't? Please don't stray into another tangent, please. If you want to hear more, then show your respect and bring this lady a present. Well, great. Now we have the hardest diddly do lock yet. Yeah. And it's with Windbag. Old Bag. Looks like the investigation is still in full swing. The hotel staff and the police are running around like a bunch of headless chickens. I wonder if we can do any investigating of our own in this kind of atmosphere. Well, we got to roll up in s the sleeves and try, I guess. I wonder if Gumshoe will be here. Hey, you're here! Been waiting for you, Mr. Lawyer. Lada. Hey, my Mr. Cobbfella, the thief showed his face! What? Arrest him, put him on trial, find him guilty, give him the death penalty! What's wrong, Lada? Are you feeling all right? Look here and then, up and down the mountain, but it ain't here. So why don't you just hurry up and give it back to me, you creep? Um, what are you looking for? My camera! C-A-M-E-R-A -E camera! It's my lifeblood. I'm gonna die without my $700 camera. Your camera? Look, don't let, don't lots of people say the criminals always go back to the scene of the crime. And looky, looky, here you are. Yep, here I am, faced with a lot of trouble. Huh? I thought we were friends. So you lost your camera. It ain't no ordinary camera. You buy it in a store and it's 1600 brand new. Huh? But didn't you just say you bought it for 700 I had a nice long talk with the guy at the store. About five hours, I reckon. I made this itty bit of scratch on it and the magic got all huffed up in the face. He gave me this talking to him and was real mean about it, too. He done made me cry at that. When did you lose your camera? Last night around the murder happened. It must have been when I was busy running around looking into things. That's when I lost sight of my dear, darling, expensive sweetie. Lada, what did you capture with that most e that expensive camera of yours? I don't rightly know. I snapped a shot of anything that caught my eye. So I don't remember. And besides, I couldn't get anything for my big scoop. I wonder if Lada's missing camera is even connected to the murder. So it was added to the to the court record, but we don't even have it. Okay, that's interesting. Lotta, please tell me what you know about what happened at the time of the murder. Well, from before the ceremony last night, I was hanging around here in this area. Yeah, actually, I was here until around the time Mr. Engard was arrested. What were you doing here? You sure you went to school, city boy? Wherever a lot of hot goes, there's a story to be found, a big scoop to be had. A big scoop? I told you before, I'm going to be the best tabloid photographer the world's ever seen. Reckon, of course, that means I'm always looking for perfect shot. I wonder what scoop she was after this time. Although, I was also on the lookout for the other stars that were here. So, maybe I wasn't here the entire time? So, even if we were to bring you in as... Well, if they bring you in as a witness, you wouldn't really be that helpful because you just say you weren't here the entire time. Lotta. Are you sure you weren't there the entire time? So you could take a picture for your big scoop. Well, maybe I was, but that's what the real journalists do. I got some juicy inside info, so I thought to myself, why not get picture for proof? 
What kind of story was it that you would hang around here? Another one! We are in hell! Oops, sorry, Mr. Lawyer. Can't be telling you that. Trade secret, you know. Not again. Why does everyone have something to hide? We've been stopped, haven't we? Haha, <laughs> yeah, take that, Mr. Lawyer. I'm glad someone around here is happy. Miss Lotta and your eye roll smile. Hey, what's that? A press conference ticket? How come I ain't got one myself? Please don't direct your anger at me. Why, Tarnations, was not I invited to that? How come someone on the bottom of the popularity chart like you got the info, but not me? Info like that is worth nothing to you. Am I right or what? Is that kind of a person she thinks I am? Are you going to stand there and take that, Mr. Nick? Ha! <laughs> uh, I just bought that camera. Who did it, that thieving rascal? Please don't look straight at me when you're saying that. When I find the bugger who went and done this, they're gonna pay with a bullet! And if you do that, don't expect me to defend you. <laughs> um, do you know anything? Uh, I told you how many times now I'm a journalist. I got so much more info running laps in my head, I forget things here and there. Please don't get so worked up over this. Ha! I don't care if you beg me. Beat dicks for tough on kids. That's the scowl's matter on the learning youngsters. Well, that seems to be it. Let's go to on guard's hotel room then. Why are there just n weapons hanging about? Oh, don't tell me we're gonna have more T-bone steak. Um, where are we? We're in Matt on guard's dressing room. This is our client's side. May I help you with something? Who are you? Might you be the person that the killer was like saying? Because I'm fairly certain that they implied that it was a woman who was framing on guard. So maybe you're evil. Um, we're, you're Mr. On Guard's lawyer, correct? My gathered as much. I also looked for lawyers on my end, but to no avail. Um, how did you know I'm his lawyer? You were just saying that he is your client. In a situation like this, the only person who would use such a word would be his lawyer. Well. It's a simple deduction, really. The trial's tomorrow, and Mr. On Guard's situation is looking rather grim. So you came here one stop, uh, one stop in your mad dash to find clues to build his case, correct? Well, you're not totally right, but you're not totally off either. It's really not the time to be showing off, Mr. Nick. I'm a Adrian Andrews. I hate to waste time, so let's get down to business. Let's get down to business to solve the case. All right. She may be small of stature, but appearance can be deceiving. I assume the first thing you need to know is what everyone was doing that night, correct? Yes, that is correct. Then I will tell you. Before the award ceremony, I had dinner with Mr. On Guard. In this very room, I might add. Dinner? What did you eat? I told you, I hate to waste time with trifling details. T-Bone Steak saved the case last time the samurai was on the stand. If you take a look around the table yourself, you wouldn't need to ask me. I bet she's a lot of fun at parties. When the award show was starting, I he headed for Voila, Ho Vo Voila Hall. And after the show ended, you came back to this room? No, I had some small errands to run. I helped with the preparations in the lobby. Oh. Preparations for the post-ceremony show, I guess. When it was time for the post-ceremony show, I came back to call Mr. On Guard. After that, I went to visit Mr. Corrida. And that's when you found his body, isn't it? You really held strong through everything. Yeah, she does seem to be mentally tough as nails. Um, so, about you and... Stop right there. You aren't seriously about to ask how Mr. On Guard and I are related, are you? Sorry. I have no idea how he could, uh, could chose you as his lawyer. Why did you she have to go and say something like that? Mr. Nick, calm down and hang in there. I'll give you a shoulder up to relieve your stress later, all right? I don't know. That seems a little creepy from coming from a little girl. All right. I already gave you my name earlier, but I'll add that I'm Mr. On Guard's manager. His manager? Speaking of managers, did the victim Mr. Corrida have one? No, he did not. He didn't? Global Studios has a very different policy from Worldwide Studios in that. Worldwide Studios does not assign individual managers to their stars. I see. This industry is very ruthless and unforgiving. Actually, you look quite ruthless and unforgiving yourself to your poor partner. 
dragging a little girl to her play like places like this, honestly. You're wrong. I, I'm doing this to help Mystic Maya. Girls, calm down and hang in there. I'll buy you a juice later, all right? Mm. Well, I guess let's examine and then maybe see if she cares about anything we have. It's probably Mr. Ungard's suitcase. For someone who is only going to be here for the award show, this is a lot of stuff. Looks like he has about three days worth of clothes in here. Stars really are different from us, aren't they? Let me guess, T-Bone Stick. There's a giant bone sitting on the plate. I... I don't really like meat. There's something... weird about this plate. I just wish I could put my finger on what it is. It's because we're back here again! Looks like dishes left over from dinner. A dinner for two at that. I'm sure they're Mr. Ungard and Miss Andrew's plates. Looks like they had T-Bone steaks. That's what Global Studios... What's with Global Studios and T-Bone steaks? Also, this one didn't doesn't have a knife. That's a bit odd. There's some samurai-looking clothes on the sofa here. Um, I think that jacket-looking thing is called a happy. Whatever it is, I'm sure something like that would make a great souvenir. I would absolutely be thrilled. That's the bedroom over there. That's a bed? Wow, they have really big beds here. And it's a two-bedroom. Well, I guess let's show things. Do you know about a camera? I'd like to ask you about this. I told you, I hate trifling matters. It's a waste of time to show me things that are of no relevance to me. Ah, oh, this is the first time I've been shut down this badly. I don't know. You were the one taking care of the arrangement for this press conference, right? Yes, that's right. But Mr. Ungard said he didn't know about it. Is that what he said? Huh? Actually, I didn't know all the details either. It was a request from the publicity department. All I did was help out and do what I was asked. Oh, I see. I wonder about that. I wouldn't take her to be the type of person to do something without knowing the details. That is a bit odd. Because she is, like, very... Seems like on top of things. Did you know the victim, Mr. Corrida? Yes, I knew him. The world is such a small place, after all. Did you know about his rivalry with Nickel Samurai? Honestly, they were like children when it came to that. Time and time again, those two competed with each other over the most trivial things. If either one of them wasn't so stubborn, then maybe no one would have needed to die. I've got a hunch this woman knows more than she's letting on. She must know why Juan Corda was killed. I asked to become Mr. Ungard's manager. He's a pleasure to manage with his nice disposition. Hmm, Mr. Ungard does seem like a rather weak-willed man, always doing as he's told. He's always saying my manager right, Mr. Nick. Motive for murder. Do you have any ideas as to, as to why Mr. Corda was murdered? Why would you ask me about such a thing? I'm just doing my job, so do you have any ideas? Three! Three! All in a row! Oh! The only one who isn't lying to me is my client! Miss Andrews? Sorry, but there's nothing more I have to add to this conversation. Is it a psych Mr. Nick? Yes. There's going to be more and more of these lately. Great. Well, it's... So many psych What the fuck? Why are there so many bears? Mr. Nick, where are we? We're in Juan Corrida's room, Pearls. Mr. Corrida? The victim. Which makes this the crime scene, too. Oh, it's you! So, what's happened? The kidnapper! Has he contacted you again? Not yet. Probably won't until we win Mr. Ungard's acquittal. Um, you're doing okay, pal? Hanging in there? I just want Maya to be all right. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can, pal! Can you do that? Even if we want to look around the crime scene? Just this once. Special circumstances, right, pal? I'll even tell you everything I know, but you've gotta keep quiet. It's my neck on the line here. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map of the hotel, pal. Here you go. Here you go, little missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you. <laughs> Wouldn't want you to get lost in the hotel too big for it so good. 
Mr. Nick, I got a map! That's great, Pearls. Um... But Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Well, that's interesting. I'll have to look at it. What does it say? It's very simple, alright? But I'm going to assume that's gonna be... necessary. Well, first things first, I guess... Let's gaze upon the horrors. Wow, there are a lot of bears! Alarm clock ones, collector's editions, stuffed teddies, plastic models... It's pretty overwhelming. Is there a kind of bear he doesn't have? There's even a few in the trash can. Yeah, I get the feeling maybe the guy didn't really like bears. Poor teddies. It's hard to bear with all these problems! <laughs> Why are you back? Why is the clown here in my mind? I don't think I want to bear with the trauma of that last case caused me. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Horrors. Horrors beyond horrors. It's a suitcase. There's so many things in it that I bet it barely closes. There's his clothes, a dryer, an electric shaver, a calculator. Do all stars pack too much stuff like Mr. Corrida? Hmm. It's so messy here. Girls really likes things neat and tidy, I take it. There are a lot of electronic things in here that I've never seen before. Hey, Mr. Nick, tell me what they are, pretty please. Okay. That over there is a watch. You wear it on your wrist. I know what a watch is. Oops. For a second there, I forgot I was talking with Pearls, not Maya. <laughs> oh, and we can slide. I was going to wonder, because we haven't had the ability to slide our perspective in a while. There are all sorts of things in this refrigerator. The carrot juice bottle and the tomato juice bottle are both empty. Empty? It's too much of a hassle to throw them away, I guess. They're all vegetable juices. I guess he must have been a real health nut. Oh, there's a beet and ketchup and a bottle of strawberry jam, too. Maybe red was his favorite color? Or maybe he faked his death? Too much red. So that's a bed, right? Yep, it's big, but it's a bed. Ah, Mr. Nick, it's so soft! Big beds must be a rarity for her. I mean, she literally, like, sleeps on the floor, and... This is also, like, a T-Bone Steak-esque plate, but... Yeah, the other one that I presumably was Andrew's doesn't have a knife. Looks like Mr. Corda had dinner last night. This bottle, it's tomato juice. We had a lot of food at the award show last night. But I wonder if the stars had gone on stage after only eating a meager meal like this. Hmm, odd that I can't select the fallen over diddly dee. And the... And it was noted that the guitar was missing from the like, ceremony itself. Bottles of cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. This is probably where Mr. Corda fought his assailant. What are these bits of glass from? Flower vase, maybe? There are flowers on the floor, but I don't know what they are. You don't know much about flowers, do you, Mr. Nick? This is a guitar case, I guess. A little beat up, but still usable. That's strange, the guitar's not here. Maybe he forgot to bring it to the show? But Mystic Maya, she said the bright red guitar was the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. That's true. Huh? This guitar case is wet, but it's only wet on the top of the lid. Yeah, there's no water inside the case. This is water, isn't it? The guitar case added to the court record. So, the flower vase shattered on top of the guitar case during the fight. Then they must have opened it and taken what was there. Either that or it wasn't the guitar in the case at all. Do you know what was the cause of death? Well, technically the final autopsy report isn't out yet, but one look at the victim should tell you, pal. It should? Yeah, here's a picture. And it was the dinner knife from, yeah, the meal. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal. That's the murder weapon. So he was stabbed to death. But only one stab? They're looking at the fingerprints down at the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife. Yep. And it looks like they're pretty sure they're Mr. On God's prints, pal. That's bad. Real bad. Reason for arrest. 
All this talking makes me need to hydrate. Why was Mr. On Guard arrested? Because we had evidence on him. Evidence? It looks like the victim, Juan Corridor, really put up a big fight. Yeah, one look at the crime scene and you, you can tell. There's signs of a struggle everywhere. Well, yeah, during the fight, his button came off. The strong guard said something about a button. Something like one of the Jammin' Ninja's buttons got caught in his hakama. But that's not all. What? There was a witness, pal. A witness? Who is it? That lady, Miss Oldback. Please, anyone but her. The prosecution has plenty of evidence to make a solved case. Not to mention there's something around where the Vic was that's a little off. Something that's a little off, as in... As in, that's for you to figure out, pal! Alright, let's try and figure it out, Mr. Nick. Hmm. It is odd that there would be, like, a vase that would fall off, because presumably it would be here, and it would fall, break on the case. But then, what's with this drink? It's a beautiful wine glass, and there's tomato juice in it. Ooh, tomato juice. I don't really like it much. There's a bottle of it on the table there. That's probably where it came from. But doesn't it seem weird? What well, seems weird? I mean, everything else is scattered all around the floor. She's right. The flower vase was broken, and the makeup is strewn everywhere. Why is this glass the only thing that's still all right? That is quite odd. So I guess I need to then present to you... Well, first let's ask about the case. What can you tell me about this guitar case? Oh, that! This is just what I heard, pal. But that's the Gem and Ninja's signature item. The guitar case? No, not that. What do you think me as? I mean... Ah, excuse me. Drank water and now my body wants to die. I mean the guitar inside, of course. But the guitar is missing. Yeah, we looked for it too. It's not normal for a person to forget to bring their most famous item to an award show. It's starting to sound like the red guitar is related to the case after all. So about this wine glass. Ha, <laughs> so you noticed it, pal. The whole crime scene was a mess, but this glass was the only thing that was untouched. You noticed that too, detective? No, oh, actually, Ms. Von Kama noticed it first. Yeah, Pearls noticed it before me too. Wait a minute. So, does that mean Miss Von Karma's here at the hotel? Yeah, she's around, man. You're gonna be in so much trouble, pal. Especially if she catches you in here. Well, you can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running the 1,000 meter dash. Time to run, I say. What's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? Hmm, I've heard this sound somewhere before. It's Miss Van Karma! Huh? For some reason, whenever I hear that sound, she pops up out of nowhere and whips me! Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened the last time. Sorry! I've gotta make myself scarce! Later, pal! Ah! At last, you reveal your true nature. Mr. Phoenix Wright! Ah, uh, would it be too much to ask you for to be nice to me for a change? So you're the type to steal information from pitifully hopeless detectives. That's very dishonorable of you! Ow! Hey, don't you dare run away scrubbing the trench coat! Uh. I didn't think the detectives of this country could be this pitiful. Uh. Detective, come over here for a second! No! <laughs> Poor guy. He probably should have just ran. Hmm. I feel better knowing at least you are man enough to face your punishment. He was so scared, he just froze up on the spot. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you... you have served my perfect prosecution record twice. I'll never forget that. This time, victory is mine. Victory is yours? Is all this... is that all this means to you? What? Hmm. Come, Scrappy, the investigation briefing is about to begin. Yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Ow! What did she throw at me now? What's this? Well, I guess this means I've got to get back to the precinct now, pal. 
If you ever need me, come down to Criminal Affairs Department, all right? And if you can, try not to let Miss Van Karma see you. Interesting. What did she throw at me? Oh, so she threw a thing at me, but I can't look at it? Darn you. Oh, no, because it fell on the f uh, diddly dee. Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? It's called an autograph. Autograph? The paper's got Mr. Corda's name written on it, so it's his autograph. I can't read it all, to be honest. To be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. Ah, uh, it's a special way of writing called cursive. Look here, see how it says, To my dearest Wendy in the more normal letters here. This is sloppy, unreadable writing. It's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Like, I know that cursive had a purpose back when it was, like, very drippy ink pens. Or, like, well, ink pens that were, like, the classical, you dip them into an inkwell and do it, I think. Because that's how they used to do it. It was very drippy, and if you weren't careful, it would be very sloppy. And if you lifted the pen, it would cause droplets of ink. So they're like, ah, do it in one big go. And now it's completely antiquated and not necessary anymore. Hold on. Wendy. I've heard that name somewhere before. Mr. Corda's autograph added to the record. Well, that seems to be it here. What did we get here? Well, we have something presumably for old bags, diddly D. The wine glass, which is just odd. It hasn't been drank at all. And oddly isn't, like, disturbed at the scene of the crime. Uh, presumably, the... And, well, at least by the time the people came here and took this picture, the guitar was taken. Very interesting. And that's presumably the steak knife from the Nickel Samurai's room. Well... Presumably now... Well, I think the game might be pushing me towards Windy Old Bag now. Since we have more stuff. Well, let's see if we can... Like, show her the case. Nope. Might as well. What about this juice? How about a dead body? She doesn't care about the dead body. Well, I guess the game is pushing me towards... I, I bet, yeah. For some reason, movement is odd to me. My brain is just like, I want to go here. And then the game and my fingers, they don't go together well. Oh, Mr. Wright! How are you? Ah, Mr. Powers. Have you been here the entire time? Yeah. People connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. Well, please don't have... I, I, I'm I, going to assume that you are not going to lie to me. Can you tell me a little more about the Nickeled Samurai TV show? Okay. The Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to The Steel Samurai. I see. This time there are three samurai brothers. Aluminum samurai, tin samurai, and of course, the nickel samurai. It's a love why in new old... It's a love why? In new old Tokyo. I see. W wait, a love what? A love why? This girl Sayo works at the tea shop with all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh. I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers colliding over this one girl. Anyway, Sai was actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation. Like Romeo and Juliet. Times three. <laughs> yeah. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um... Yes, Pearl? What happens next? I want to know. Miss Sayo, does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. I'm going to stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater starting this week. I can't believe she's really considering it. <laughs> Especially because Phoenix likes that show. <laughs> so what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. The Jam and Ninja, like the Samurai shows, is geared towards kids. It's the story of a ninja who can't scale a wall, but became a big pop, a big pop star anyway. Uh, what? 
He was a really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do anything ninja thing. Couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy, could he sing. With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. A ninja with a bright red guitar? And then the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Mizola. Jammin' versus the Muromachi Five. Suddenly, our brave hero catches a not so jammin' cold the night before Battle Three. Ah, uh, that's too bad for him. Yeah. But this kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Um. Yes, Pearl? What happens next? I wanna know! Jammin', the Jammin' Ninja, will he be able to sing? What about Princess Mizola? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, which show should I watch? Hmm. I can't believe she's really considering it. <laughs> I love that Phoenix just has the same reaction to both of them. I can't believe it. She's considering it. Well, I guess let's ask you about Juan. He debuted at around the same time as Matt and everything, you know. Really? It started out small. First it was singing contests and swimming competitions. Then it was bowling tournaments. And then it was who could throw the best New Year's parties. Juan was always trying to one-up Matt. But lately, those two were escalating to more and more dangerous things. I thought that no good would come of it all, so I began to worry. Too bad Juan's story ended so soon. Matt's younger than me, but you can practically see his star potential. His star potential? I got his autograph the other day. Feels kind of wrong now, doesn't it? I don't care what people say. Matt didn't kill Juan. I know he didn't. Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. Hmm, so Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, here's the thing. I don't really know her, know her, you know. There's sort of a small rumor going around about her right now. A rumor? Uh, if you're interested, I'd be glad to share what I know. He's so happy, he looks like a lion that's just found his next meal. Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Me. Ah. ah, so you are interested in it. I figured you would be. Yeah. I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip, too. Oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah, so take a look at this. Looks like a tabloid Miss Oldbag would read. All right, let's see here. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious but beautiful manager, to the stars, Miss AA. You see now, don't you? What? You can stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Corrida didn't have a manager of his own. Which means if we were talking about a certain manager with the initials AA... Adrian Andrews? Yes, exactly. This is big news. But it seems kind of odd, that woman Miss Andrews. Together with the biggest rival of her client? Uh, it's what the wonderful thing that can happen between two people. Miss Powers looks so happy. Mr. Powers. Pearls are just following along, not having any ideas to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Magazine clipping added. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess I'll show him, like, the guitar case. That guitar case? That was Wands. I'm guessing you've seen this case before? It's perfectly, it's pretty famous by now. It stands out because it holds the bright red guitar. The bright red guitar, the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. But if the guitar is so important, how could he forget it for the award ceremony? That does seem a little strange. That's why I'm thinking that maybe... That's why I'm thinking that... I'm trying to think. Because my brain is saying that maybe he was dead before the ceremony. Either that or, like, he had plans for the guitar. Sorry. Sure thing. Superstar in an ultra-hot mega-secret love scandal. Reliable sources say that one chord has been close with the mysterious and beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. Miss Alcoholics Anonymous. Well, he was talking about, like, 
Huh. Since he was talking about autographs, I figured maybe he would have something to say there. Well, back to the hotel lobby. And I presume that we can maybe take you on now. But first, let's, like, uh... Go over things. Don't want anything to say. How about the death scene? I still love the... Like her leaning and pointing the gun at you and firing. It just amuses me. She just has nothing to say about any of this. Well, how about... The gossip? Nope. She doesn't even care about the gossip. How about the autograph? Wow, she doesn't even have anything to say about that. So I guess I have to activate that to be able to present anything. Well, let's try! Take on the four goddamn chains. What you witnessed. All right, I'll be honest with you for now. Then please, tell us what you saw. But ah, oh, what a waste. And here I have perfectly good chance to have a little fun at ye youngin's expense. I am a little devil, after all. Um, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? All right, I'll give you what you want. You want your autograph back. Th th that's that's Wad's autograph! Yes, it is. And, and it even says, to my dearest Windy on it. Th th that's me, right? Right? Um... My name is Windy Old Bag, so that Windy has to be me, right? Well, it may say Windy, but somehow I don't think one had this Windy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please, give it to me. Let me have it, please. Uh, uh, I can't let you have it just like that. Yes, yes, I know. Then how about an exchange? <laughs> oh, my! <laughs> Are you joking me? Are you joking me? You're gonna put up a front of four scary locks and then one piece of evidence shatters three of them? <laughs> oh, my side is hurting. Oh, it was healing after I slept on it wrong, but oh, now it is back to hurt me after the laughter. Ow. Ow, Wendy is attacking me in real life. She must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you? Fine, Mr. Right, you win. Windy old bag, ready to open her heart. All for my dearest one. <laughs> that was the easiest Cycloc thing ever, and I love it. <laughs> I love that they're already kind of poking fun at the Cycloc feature. They added it this game. It's been in here for two cases. And they're just like, hey, would you like to have some wacky old fun old time? Oh. <laughs> that amuses me greatly. <laughs> Autograph given to Wendy. <laughs> well, what did you see? I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding! Oh no! It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And? Did you tell the, that to the police? Well, of course! I thought I could get a gift certificate out of it, to, or two out of it, maybe more. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for that part of the trial, you know, the trial tomorrow. This time, you're gonna get it! I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty! But Mr. Unguard hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know he did my dear poor Dwan in. I just do! That yellow-bellied chicken! A yellow-bellied chicken? I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did Mr. Ungard ever do to her to deserve this? What did Mr. Ungard do to you to make you so... You don't know? That guy, he framed by Juan! He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan! Mr. Nick! What is it? What's a scandal? Oh, um, I'll tell you about this after we get home, okay? Poor Juan, led astray by the wiles of that vile temptress! Mr. Nick, what do vials and wild temptress mean? Ah! 
Um, how about we just listen to what Miss Oldbag has to say for now, okay, Pearls? So, Miss Oldbag, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved the girl onto one on purpose. His own manager? But why? I thought lawyers were smart. It was to create a scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyways, Miss Oldbag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. On Guard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Ah, uh, of course. Tabloid. Next week? Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Oldbag have information like that? And where did she get it? <laughs> you mean this tabloid? Nope. But still, that is got to be the most hilarious Cycloc opening ever. All right, so now we have some information. But can we even do anything with that? So, hmm. Yeah, let's see. She's on the big scoop, but I don't think we have anything that could, like, dilly D. Hmm. Well, let's see if there's anything we can do with her locks. I don't think so. We'll probably have to go to the uh, go see gumshoe why was Juan Corda murdered if you ask me I think you know the reason he was killed hmm why are you hiding things don't you realize you're putting Mr. On Guard's life in danger by your actions why do you ask questions for which I have no answers the truth is I was not that close to Mr. Corda you're not that close that's right I've never been good at being intimate with another person you're not good at being intimate with another person. Somehow, I doubt that. You and Mr. Corda had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third-rate tabloid article. If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite few people have already bought into this story. Hmm, has to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self, stay on her good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close to someone? Me? I need not get close? Need to get close to Mr. Corda? As if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close to Corda for this person's sake? Well. Okay, so not. What? Not my nature to do things for others. But you're a manager. It's called a job. I'm in charge of Mr. On Guard the Star, not On Guard the Man. Oh. And you're not my client. Hmm. This is my subtle hint to go home. But I know you must have had a need to get close to the victim. Hmm. So, hmm. So we don't have that information yet. Definitely interesting. We have part of the answer. But... Apparently, we might not have met the other person yet, unless it's, like, maybe herself? Like, but we'll go and gather more information, and then if, like, we come back and have, like, nothing else we can do, then we'll go crazy. Hmm, it doesn't seem like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Great. Now even Pearls is calling him Scruffy. Thanks, Frenzy. Scuff. They said something about an investigation briefing earlier, right? Why don't we come back and try again after when they're done? Okay, I guess that's all we can do, right, Mr. Nick? Hmm. Well, maybe he has something to say. This must be the chief of detectives here. He's glued to his computer screen. What? The Hero of Heroes award ceremony? The grand prize got away from the German ninja again! Shouldn't you be reading something more important? Well, maybe something at the detention center? Yes! Ah, the lawyer dude. So what did you find out? Um, well, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see. But I've already told you everything I know, dude. 
can you tell me about your activities? After I got the award, I took a break in my room. Went back to my room. I had the poster on my stage show to do. So I was in my Nickel Samurai costume. And you were alone the entire time. My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. This is the press conference you're supposed to hold. I told you, dude. I have no idea about any conference, alright? Dirty dead. This one there. Some detectives in green showed up. He searched me. It's odd that those are, like, reset, but we might as well read. That's got nothing to do with anything. Man, if that face of his, I can't even tell he's the same age. Jim and Ninja movie. Summary was still one in the end. The yeah, actors were pretty, so why would I have any read? Dude, you think it would be the other way around, right? Well, let's talk about Guitar Case. It's not like I buy anything and everything. That's nice, but it's not for sale anyway. Doesn't want to buy a dead body. What do you think about this article? Huh. <laughs> if you're talking about her thing with Juan, I always thought she was a bit careless in the way she handled it. And that's it? That's it! I feel... Okay, that's odd that we can't go from the detention center to the hotel lobby. Huh. Oh! idea. Actually, back to the criminal affairs department so that we can then go to the detention center because we need to ask him about her specifically. Ha 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 I am not a fool. Slap it up. That's my manager. Did you meet her? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Strong woman, right? And she takes good care of me. You're such a mama's boy. And that's it! You have nothing to provide to me! Your poor man! Diddly 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 dee. Well, maybe we have stuff for you? Let's see what the opening question is. Because these cyclops are the last thing, unless I'm missing something. And it's a simple one, but we need the exact things. Well, let's see. Lada, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? For my scoop! What I want to know about that are the details of this scoop. That's not something I can tell you. I mean that there's my bread and butter. All right, then, an unpleasant tabloid for the carver look you for a scoop. I'm going to say that you were looking into a scandal. Ah! Could it be that you, Lada Hart, were looking for a break with a huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Juan Corrida and this person? Th this woman! She's Anne Adrian Andrews, Madame Guard's manager. Hmm! The Nickel Samurai's manager caught secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. It would be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the papers. You gotta have backup. Backup? Yeah, yeah. You gotta have that, that, what's it, new sauce? Um, you mean news source? That's it. So show me something that shows that Juan guy had something with Miss Andrews. Well, it's another tabloid, but, yeah. This is the article from a certain weekly tabloid. Jam and Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. Ah! Mr. Corda didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Miss Ungard's manager, Adrian Andrews, she has the initials A.A. You saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were lurking around Miss Corda's door last night. Wah! Wah! She gets so angry, she accidentally becomes Wario. And now I'm healed! You were looking into Mr. Corda and Mrs. Andrews' affair, weren't you? You got it! I was gonna get myself a scoop by catching him in a secret meeting! Well, there's already an article about it in one of the weekly tabloid magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What'd you just say? Her initials are AA. What kind of vague thing is that? There ain't no proof of nothing. People are gonna want to see real proof. Well, at least I do. So that's what I was doing. Getting photos. Oh, I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest of some gossip and a little misleading. 
then spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow, a lot of nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing up my spicy article, you know, but the paper I wrote it on, my note to myself, it's gone. Your note to yourself? It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They done run off together. I came up for my big story, didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, I understand. It's enough to make a gal go bonkers, I tell you. What's a people now, anyway? I never thought I'd see the day when someone someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? I've got no idea why, though. The story on that note is probably a bold-faced lie. Lotta's camera updated in the court record. All right. Thought that doesn't... Hmm. Still gotta get more information. Hmm. So, do you know anything about the character? Nope. Do you know anything about the character? Just not saying anything. Hmm. Does that mean that we have all the information? Well, let's quickly jump about everywhere just to see if anything new crops up because. I don't think that we have the information to get stuff out of Andrews, but it's entirely possible that she was in it for herself, so I might need to, like, retry that. Aha! New stuff! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigative briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back! Hey, so you came, pal. Final blunt greeting. Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. Surely we've gotten out of worse cases. So what do you mean the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this photo. Probably the knife and the missing button. The first is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Hmm, that's the button that you found during your body search for Mr. Ungard. Yep, I found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai Special Pants. Um, uh, and the second one is... The knife in his chest, pal. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest are on guards. Well, uh, I accidentally clicked too fast and assumed dark. Fingerprints? Um, whose are they? You didn't even have to ask, little missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Miss Oldbag. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Um, well... And I even told her not to open that mouth of hers to blab to anyone. The blab knob is stuck on ten, and there's no turning it down, trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Oldbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. On Guard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. No way! Do you know about this camera? Ah, he has a new one already, all right. We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal of Mr. Corrida? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. Suicide? Her name was Celeste Impax. Celeste Impax. I'm wondering what kind of pun that is. I'm not, I'm not parsing it. And she was Juan Corrida's manager. The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Miss Impax was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman who was both Miss Corda's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor. Could her suicide have something to do with this case? Do you want to know more about it, pal? She was the victim's manager and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. It's been two years since her suicide, and now those two are linked again by another death. 
maybe it's just a coincidence, but... Ah! I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. Miss Vontana! You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. You don't... you don't mean... I do. Scrappy, you have 30 minutes to get out of here. You're no longer needed. Goodbye. But that's... Wait! Please wait, sir! If I don't get this month's pay, I'll... Quiet! If that weren't for traitors like you... I would have won. Is that what you want to say? Who? That voice. Edgeworth! It's been a long time, right? Th this person? This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I going to do with you? Still blaming others when there's when things go wrong? You haven't changed a bit, Franziska. Y you How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it! You've soiled the Von Common name, dragged it through the mud! You even ran away with your tail between your legs like the ill-bred dog you are! Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Franziska. How are things going? I hear you're having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. You... You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I... I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never! Mr. Phoenix Wright, I'll see you tomorrow in court. It will be a clinical lesson on the meaning of total victory. Hmm. Still the same wild mare she always was. Well, nice to see you, Edgeworth. How you doing? <laughs> Epic, like, music to come in with. I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you gonna run tomorrow's trial? You heard her right. And that wild mare hasn't given in yet, it seems. So no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own on the trial tomorrow. What's that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the definitive of t definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. Just what is going on inside his head? A lot of things may have happened, however Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of a von Karma. One year ago cannot establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It would have been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. Harsh, Phoenix! What did he do to you? I see. Then let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Well, when Franziska, she almost always says, I will defeat you this time, the instant she sees me. But the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client, to save their lives. To save your client, you say? Those who think only of their own ego-driven goals, those kind of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy, or someone like you, Edgeworth, it looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I've yet to learn? Me? Hm. Well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. Well, what? Do you have anything to say at all? We're looking into leads, but we can only look into a few key players of our limited resources. There's no reason for us to waste our <laughs> energy investigating gumshoe. Well, let's see. There's an interesting rumor about this man. You mean the one about Miss Andrews getting close to him? 
Well, that's a pretty common tabloid fare, isn't it? I don't take things at face value and there's more to be found. While I was abroad, these deplorable types of actors became popular, I take it. Well, refreshing like a spring breeze is his motto. Re refreshing And what is so refreshing about a spring breeze? Sounds like the pollen's not treating him well this year. Adrian Andrews. She holds a large secret within herself. A secret? You can't help but feel that this whole case revolves around her. <laughs> we won't even talk about Franziska. But interesting. What the hell did happen between them to make Phoenix so angry with him? Well, I... Darn, she's gone. Are you here? Mm, it looks like Miss Andrews isn't here. That's not good. I still have a few questions I want to ask her. And she has that psych lock on her heart, right? Well, we don't have much of a choice. I guess we'll have to come back later. There doesn't seem to be anything, like, new. Anything important. Hmm. Well, you're a tabloid person now. Do you know about this? Nope. Maybe Corridor's room. Nope. Hmm. Then I guess maybe we need to go back to the detention center. Ah, maybe you know about her mentor. Nope. Hmm. I figured since he was in the industry that he might have an idea. Do you have an idea? You probably don't, but I might as well ask you. Hmm. And that just leaves going to the criminal affairs department so that I can then go to the detention center. Um, what's wrong? How much do you know? What do you mean, how much do I know? Mr. Lawyer, I may be your client, but... I hope you'll keep yourself out of my personal life. Uh, no, I would never. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lunch appointment I have to keep. You're in detention! Who in the world are you gonna eat with? The security guard? Mr. Nick? Miss Celeste in Pax Lady. Somehow I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this. Huh. I guess now we wander back. We already asked everybody if they knew her. Are you back? Damn it. Hmm. Well, great. What do I do now? <sighs> because of the evidence I have, I'm looking for a goddamn camera. Could it be that she somehow dropped the camera somewhere? Hmm. I didn't touch them. It wasn't me, I tell you. I give you my word. Why do I get the impression Lotta helped herself to one of them? Hmm. Just going through, random. Yeah, that's what I thought too. So I was nice enough to gal to lend a helping hand. Secretly, of course. I have a feeling one of these days I'm gonna end up defending her in court. That would be hilarious, if true. Hmm. Just glancing around to see if, like, I don't know, her case is missing or something. If I can find it just in a random place. <laughs> I still find it hilarious that her case is in our inventory, technically. Lots of bears randomly. Why does he have so many if he doesn't like them? Hmm. Hmm. Well, what the hell do I do? I'll look around a bit more than I might consult a guide just to know where to go next. Uh, hey, have you seen a camera? 
Well, maybe you know about a camera. Probably not. Then again, what if the camera is one of these ones that's set up out here? That'd be hilarious, right? I really clicked the double. Hmm. Well, I guess ask anything. Anything. Shouldn't we want to tell him about what happened? Anything at all. Murder. Hmm. Oh, he's still gone. Hmm. Well, what should we do? Since there were no Cyclops, then that means we can trust Mr. Ungard to be innocent. I really feel much better knowing that. Ever since last night, I was worried that I kept wondering, what if he is the real killer? What then? Hey, do you have any ideas? I have something I want to ask you, Pearls. Okay, what is it? Why are you so interested in how Maya and I get along? I mean, she and I don't have anything special go- Huh? What do you mean? But, but I thought- I thought you and Mystic Maya were- I've been mistaken all this time? No way! Ah, she really wasn't kidding! Pearls actually believes Maya and I are- Maybe I should have just left it alone. Mr. Nick, stop it! Don't hide your true feelings from me! Ow! Oh, she slapped me! Hilarious. Since you're the only new one, maybe maybe I need to show you my badge? Nope. Maybe the Magatama. Nope. Do I need to ask you about her specifically? Hmm. This woman is another key to solving this case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago. But she was suddenly called away by a different show and became one Corita's manager. And then a few months later, Celeste Impacts died. But, but her death was ruled a suicide, right? Yes, but there's still one riddle we've yet to solve. A riddle? A suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? So that was important info. Maybe that's the info we needed to come back and have things activate? Maybe? Miss Andrews, Alcoholics Anonymous, be there! Bitch! Got new info. Hmm. I shall quickly consult a guide that will just tell me the next course of action of where I need to go. Or do. Just something. Just a small little nudge. That's all that I require. This investigation has been going on a long time. Doodly doodly do, just looking, just looking, just looking. Just looking. that, uh, seemingly, a conversation thing might have been added to Edgeworth now. That's the only little wonky thing. All right. Miss Impax's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. And that's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. A suicide note? But how do you know Miss Impax had even written such a note? There was no solid evidence, however... We did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Corridor himself. Th the victim? Because he found her. Brutal. 
He was the one who found her body. Why does he always have, like, a stalk of whatever out of his mouth? He looks like a weirdo. Which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Corridor hid his own manager's suicide note, but why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. But now I think you should look this over. And this is the suicide report, part one, anyway. Part one? Alright. Well, I guess not present. I'll just take a look myself. That's very simple. Well, yes, you give to me, but what do you think? I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That has two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here is the second. <laughs> okay, that was easy! <laughs> Why did you just give me both? The second part is a report about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name is Adrian Andrews! Miss Andrews? Um, what did she do? She... she tried to kill herself. She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try to kill herself, though. You think there's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews, she has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature. That's what she's really like on the inside. Miss Andrews? Dependent? Talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. Interesting. I thought we don't have, like, the second one to use, but... Uh, just to make sure, I keep hitting the wrong ones. Alright, no new additional thing and things. I'm going to assume now that we go, like, may... Let's just double check here. Good, he's not here. Now we will... I still find it odd that it won't let me go from the detention center to the hotel lobby. I doubt we'll get anything out of you guys, so we're gonna run straight... Damn it. Well, I guess I was wrong. Are you in the room here? Where are you, woman? Would you like to look over a suicide? Higgledy jiggledy ha ha ha. Hmm. Well, what the hell do I do? Quick, do the diddly dee. So apparently, uh, maybe we're not done with. But he didn't add anything. Hmm. Do we need to, like, talk about her again? Adrian Andrew. She has a lot of secret in herself. A secret? You can tell by the full thing. Yeah. Oh, it moved to the top, how dare you? What's this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Adrian Andrews' attempt at suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste in Pax. And? And why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she... Third time we see this. Still brutal. Her pillar of strength... The mentor Celeste Impacts was gone forever. That's why. Why would that... Is this why they call following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling sessions. She is someone who needs a person in whom she can trust absolutely. And once she finds that person, she'll do anything she can to keep them near. Without such an anchor in her life, her crippling anxiety stifles her ability to live. And that's... that's the nature of her dependency on others? When Celeste and Pack suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. And that's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then... then that means her super-confident attitude... It's all a facade. 
She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. All right. So I wonder if the Celeste impacts like Diddly D is the one that we need to present to her or if we need to present herself because of her dependency issues. Well, let's uh, go in and see. Are you back? Oh, Miss Andrews is here, but it looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisca Von Karma. Miss Von Karma? What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? Th that's you, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls? You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. Let me show you something interesting, little girl. Yes, the locator. So she has the locator. Why? What is that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fool's every move. So that noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for the poor detective gumshoe now. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews? Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? All right. What are those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Well, great. Von Karma probably came in here and screwed with a witness. Well, by the way... Take that. Ba -ba. Let's see if we can go through this. Motive for murder. Why was one quarter murdered? If you ask me, I think it's the reason... I think you know the reason he was killed. Hmm, why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Miss Rungard's life in danger by your actions? Like, well, the truth is, blah, blah, blah. That's right, I've never been good at being intimate with one person. Again, I highly doubt that. We then present the magazine clipping. My cooks and liars, and in that case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see, however... Need, what if there was a need to get close? Need to get close to Mr. Corda. If there was such a need, didn't... For... It's either herself or impacts. Celeste impacts. Your mentor. How did you know about Celeste? Miss impacts. She committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Corda's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Corda so you could find out more about her suicide. You have a great imagination. You may have a gr... You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker from a putrid third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There was no mystery surrounding her death. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Is there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you were completely at ease with her suicide. Because it was missing, the note! Miss Impact's suicide note was never found, was it? It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corrida. Juan? And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corrida. I've sat by quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor, however, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. It, I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. That's the impression you like to give. However, I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste impacts with someone very important to you. Miss Andrews, you... You nearly went through with it too, didn't you? Went through with what? And in your life. Miss Andrews, you look like I, and you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, relying only on yourself. Yes. I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie. A facade. You've always searched out for people on whom you can depend on. That's You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why 
When she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop! Yeesh. When Celeste passed away, so suddenly like that, I died a death of my own, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corrida of hiding Miss Impax's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close. Am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. What do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the one with a reason to want Mr. Corrida dead. Me? Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? Well, okay. That's interesting that multiple locks can go at once. I do like it narratively. It's very interesting. But it does set expectations wonkily. It's true. I'm a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I've pushed against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews. This one thing. It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I... I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note. And that someone was Juan Corrida. Celeste. Without her... Without her, I became scared. Everything... Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corrida to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. If they purposefully add fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But as for the suicide notes, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough from now. I still have work to do, so I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask. My attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. If people found out about my weakness, I, I would sooner choose death than to live. Uh, all right, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. If she's the overthinking type, she probably never says anything without carefully thinking it through first. Thank you for your discretion. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. Yeah, it looks like a shell. Hmm. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Huh? Oh, this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my handbag. What is it? It's, yeah, it's a, like a shell. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. I'm not remembering something clearly. Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. Ongard in your capable hands. And we're not even done with investigation? All right. Well, I don't think there's anything else to really discover unless, okay, more things happen. Oh. <laughs> Well, I think we've gathered about all we can. What about Mystic Maya? Is she all right? Pearls, she looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all and has been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're real tired, aren't you? Blech. You're real tired, right? Oh, no, I'm okay, really. I'm fine, I really am. You don't look fine to me. Just double check, nothing new. I kind of wish that it would stick to move if you went to a place that you've already been to. No 
Nothing new, nothing new. We'll quickly drop by the criminal affairs department. This is a long, like, investigative section. There's no one here. Everyone's gone. I mean, what if the three of them went to eat together? I don't think they'd ever do that. They're probably in another meeting. Well, I guess go back to the... Yep. Interesting, this is the first time we've really had to come back here. So, what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impax's suicide note? That's right. She was also the only one, the one to discover the victim's body. Clever. Oh no. Uh, Mr. Nick, the transceiver! Hello? Right in Cola offices. Mr. Attorney, you're not answering a phone. Maya! Where's Maya? As I promised, I have not gone within a few feet of her this whole time. <sighs> Which is why I suppose she is absolutely famished. What? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost, wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya, let me hear her. Very well. Ask my... Maya, is that you? Sis, ask my sis! Maya, Maya! Damn it! He cut me off! Mystic Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? Oh, I don't know. Just the, the one of the big things that's haunted your career. <laughs> Come on, Phoenix. Uh, you're a hopeless one. Uh, I'm sorry. Ah! Mia! I have a message from Maya, so come ask me anything you want about her. <laughs> so now we have Possession Telephone! Hilarious. So that rules out the killer being Franziska, but that was only like a crackpot theory anyway, because they also say Mr. Phoenix right. But that also means they can't be anybody that we already know directly right now, because they've been with her the entire time, presumably. How's Maya? She's safe, for now. That kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note she left, and then I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use spirit channeling like that. Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper! What's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ah. Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her? <laughs> Date, who knows? Uh, starving. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only thing to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Sis... I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Re <laughs> really? Okie doke! There's all sorts of things piled up here, but it's too dark to see. What's this? It feels like there's a lot of glass bottles here, and these, they feel like bottles. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. Damn. Dread, it's locked. Mm, but this door's lock seemed easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. Then click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here. Okay, first things first. If I don't do something to, to open the door first, I won't be moving anywhere. <laughs> That's funny. But okie doke, card. Huh? Someone... No. So... Whoever it is has contact with Andrews. Someone dropped a card here. It kind of looks like a business card, but there's no name on it. Alright, that's odd. Hmm. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. Ah, that's it! The shell card! If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius! All right, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it! Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or, or worried. Really? To be continued!
Damn, but it's still... We, the, that investigative section took a long time. Probably because I... It's all because of frickin' Edgeworth and his long, super windy conversation. You have to show him a person, then you have to show him evidence, then you have to show him a person, then you have to sh talk to him normally, then you have to show him more evidence. It was wacky, it was weird, why do I have to give him evidence back that he gave to me? <laughs> but still, this is going places. I do like it that it's taking characters from past cases... It brought Edgeworth back, who's been missing the entire time, but it's kind of odd that it was, like, it did feel grand, but it also feels underwhelming, considering that everyone keeps, like, he keeps saying, you know, dead, dead, as if everyone thought he was dead, but obviously not so shocking that you don't ask him what happened exactly. It just feels odd. And Edgeworth is also acting weird, but more confident and kind of nice, but kind of weird. It's very, it's a very odd situation. But the main key right now, could this, but wait. Because I thought that what was happening was Mia was telling Phoenix stuff, but what if that's not what was happening? What if Mia was telling Phoenix stuff, but at the same time that was happening, Maya managed to escape? Or are we going to learn that this is all a big, like, again, de killer? And Mr. On Guard, Matt, knows de killer. So something's up. All right, so De Killer poses as a bellboy. He goes and drugs Maya, and at the same time gives the transceiver to Powers to give to Phoenix. And from there, they talk from the transceiver, telling Phoenix that somebody is framing Matt, and that they want Phoenix to find the truth. So somebody went, like, somebody had to have had access to On Guard's room to get the knife that was used to kill On Guard, or not On Guard, but Corrida. And then the button that was on the costume either came off during the attack or was already taken off and planted. It's entirely possible that we currently don't have the... We haven't met the killer because it can't be Old Bag. It can't be Lada. It can't be Powers. And... It is interesting that Andrew said that she doesn't really have motive. Well, she says that she does have a motive, but that she, her personally wouldn't want to kill Corrida, but at the same time, she could be lying. And then there's the extra weirdness. Somebody stole Lada's, like, camera, and with the camera, stole away her tabloid article that she was writing about Andrew's meeting with Corrida. And she also might have taken a picture of something. That would be interesting. Hmm. Because he's obviously not the killer. So the only people it can be is whoever the killer is. Or Andrews. Hmm. And obviously the quote-unquote suicide is at the center of this case as well. I'm trying to think. Because Andrew said that she personally wouldn't have done it, as well as threatens to kill herself if Phoenix reveals the truth about her. Hmm... 
Then there's the stuff with the bears. There's bears, 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 but he also throws some of the bears away. Then there's also all of, like, the tomato juice and red stuff. The oddity... Then again, he plays a character who carries a red guitar. Wait. Damn it. I just had a thought because... Like, the suit that Corrida was wearing didn't look like the Jammin' Ninja outfit. And I only just now noticed, but we can't exactly start because then we'll have a lot more stuff to go through and the game will tempt me. But yeah, there was just so much there. So much there. We're already on page two of evidence and page two of, like, profiles. Hmm. There's so much to go over. It's a very tricky thing. The guitar is missing. The knife that was used to stab Corrida was the knife that Cor that on guard used to eat his T-bone steak. Hmm. Very, very wonky. Very, very wonky. Mrah. This is a very interesting mystery. Very weird. And again, I, it's odd that seemingly... Maya escaped her kidnapping, and I almost didn't go over this, but whoever the killer is has to have had some contact with Andrews because Andrews is playing with that card that was... Hmm. But at the same time... Wait... I'm just trying to think. The killer is acting very weird. And a part of me is wondering, like, at first I thought it was a crackpot theory, but what if it's not a crackpot theory? What if the killer actually is Franziska? Hmm. Because she obviously has access to great technology like the tracker that she uses to track Gumshoe. And then there's the transceiver. And it's mostly because... Hmm. But what could it be that that seashell it has to mean something the shell has to mean something everything is weird there's way too many possibilities right now i don't even know who could be the actual killer the only one that i can think of is andrews but a part of me also thinks that maybe she isn't the killer this there's too many pair uh, like variables and I'm guessing that since Maya escaped, and hell, maybe that was the entire point to a degree. That the killer wanted... Alright, I had a new thought just popped into my mind, but I'm going to continue. Because Maya w escaped using the card... And it feels like that card was left there intentionally. And Andrews also has that very same card. Implying either that card specifically was, like, the only card. And Andrews used it to let Maya out somehow. And that would imply that she's the killer. But... At the same time, I doubt it because she was the one to find the body, so she would have, like, been under police scrutiny for a bit. And the killer escorted Maya to the phone and drugged her after the murder had occurred. So I really don't think that the police would allow 
her the person who found the body to go that easily not enough that she would be able to go and disguise herself hmm but why would andrews have the same kind of card that would later be used to save maya is that a sign from the killer because the only person who could have dropped that card intentionally or not is the killer and the killer would have also put that card into andrew's bag but that doesn't explain why she's playing with the card so maybe it's a sign from the killer saying that andrew's is guilty or maybe the killer is being super funny and is the actual killer and is setting up Andrews. This is all a very wonky 5D chess shenanigans, and we're going to have to find all that out next time. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed what you saw... I have two YouTube channels, an edited content YouTube channel, I swear, content is coming to it, Neon Icy Wings, and then a stream channel on YouTube called Neon Icy Games, where I stream to as well as upload the various streams for posterity and just past shenanigans. So, if you want to watch me on YouTube, it's Neon Icy Games, or if you prefer Twitch, you can watch me live there at twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. And then, of course, if you want art from me, like my little buddy in the corner, you can follow me on the various art sites, and not quite art sites, like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Inkblot, just so many websites now. And you can find links to those in my link tree, which can be found in the various bios, descriptions, and link places of the world, or just at the direct link, linktr.ee slash neoniceywings. But yes... Thank you very much for watching, and next time we will see what if we can maybe find a bit more about this here murder mystery that is very, very weird and interesting. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye.